Among the many beautiful aspects of our century-old chapel uh, here at St. Dominic is the tabernacle doors, the tabernacle being where we store the body of Christ. The artistic motif of these doors is an ancient one with roots in scripture and Christian art, depicting the cross as a sort of tree. Uh, we usually refer to this as the cross as the tree of life. How does this make sense? Well, let me explain. For starters, it may be important for us to remember the first tree of life in the Garden of Eden with the story of Adam and Eve, where the serpent tested Eve and she gave in and gave the fruit that was forbidden by God to be eaten to Adam in disobedience of God's will. They call that the original sin, the first sin. So, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you on the board that same story. So you already know it, right? So let, let's start off. With, the name of the story is called The Fall. It's the fall of humanity. So it's called... What's it called? Aww. Okay. And in the story of the fall, one person was kind of responsible for it. And who was the person who was kind of responsible? Not the snake. Who was the person who was responsible, who did the first wrong thing? The, the man even said it when God found him. Who was the person? Yeah, it was Eve. So I'm going to draw a picture of Eve. You ready? Now, I'm an amazing artist. So just get ready for this. Here we go. Here's Eve. What do you think? Is that Eve? Okay. Hey, by the way, tell me about Eve. She's the person who starts to fall off. Does anybody know where Eve comes from? In the book of Genesis, it says that God made Eve from the side of Adam, so she would be a suitable partner for him. You guys know your Bible a little bit. Where does Eve come from? James, do you know? The rib of Adam. The rib of Adam, right? She was made out of Adam's rib. You ever hear that story? Like God made Adam first, and then he put him to sleep, and he took the rib and made Eve. Have you heard that story before? Okay, so you already knew that, right? So this means that Eve is a woman that God made from a man only, right? Yes, see, I'm a good artist. What do you say that I'm not a good artist? Okay, that's the tree. And by the way, you guys know about trees? What are trees made of? What material? Trees are made out of living wood, aren't they? Because they're alive. Are trees alive? Yeah. Yes. By the way, I am a great artist. You know how I know? Because you know automatically what that is. What's that? An apple. Oh yeah, it's fruit, I'd say, right? It's an apple, it's fruit, whatever it is. And by the way, um, I'm going to draw a person and you're going to know exactly his likeness. is going to be so good, you're going to know exactly who he is. Who's this guy? that is? Adam. Yeah, it's Adam. What did you just say? Yeah, you don't have to be a rocket scientist because they only were two people and you were into that. Sure enough, okay. So, um, what was the thing that Adam and Eve did wrong that broke the rule? What was the thing they did wrong? Do you remember? What did God say don't do and what did they then go do? Uh, uh, God told them not to eat the tree. So, what happened was somehow or other, Eve took a piece of fruit off the tree and gave it to Adam, and Adam ate it. Is that right? The verbs that were involved were take, give, and eat. Is that right? And then, and then God came looking for them and realized they did something wrong. And what happened as a result? What was the what did God say was going to happen in the end? Do you remember? All of a sudden, things were all bad. Right? Suddenly, um, suddenly. Uh, when Adam, when God asked Adam, hey, what happened? He said, Eve, you know that woman you gave me, she did this. So things are bad between God and Adam, right? And also uh, things are good, bad between the man and the woman and God. God's mad at them now, right? And he said, from now on, you're going to work really hard and you're going to have pain in your life and you're even going to die. Isn't that all the things God said in that story? Can you think of one word that might mean... Things aren't good, I've got doubts in my heart, I've got fears, things aren't good between me and the person next to me, I'm kind of mad at them, I'm gonna throw them under the bus, things aren't good with me and God, things aren't good. What's one word that might mean all of that? What's a good word for that, if you say? There's lots of good words. What's a word you might use? Do you know what this word means? Have you ever heard that word before? What's, it, what's that word? How do you read it? Read it out loud, one, two, three, go. 
alienation. Alienation. Alienation means I'm kind of not at peace with everybody around me. I'm kind of separated. And the biggest alienation of all happens at the end of our lives. What happens? How do we get separated from everybody in one day? Death, right? That's the, that's the result of what happened in the fall. Do you know this story already? You've heard this story before. Okay, the thing I'm going to show you right now is how Jesus saves us from this sin. This is the story of the and the story of how Jesus saves us is called the rise. So do some of you know this already? Okay, to do the rise, let's start with, um, who do you suppose is the person who causes the rise to happen? We already said it. Yeah, so we've got a picture of Jesus, do you mind? Light bulbs start going off, pull them off. So Jesus is going to be the person who's going to minister the rise. Who ministered the fall? So Jesus is going to be the one who does the rise. Tell me who Jesus' parents are. Who are Jesus' parents? As the light bulbs start going off, you can hold them over. Who are Jesus' parents? Yes? Who? Is Joseph Jesus' dad? No. Who is Jesus' father? Yeah. Right? Mary, and don't we always say that? So Jesus, in other words, is a man from a woman only. Does he remind you of being the opposite of anybody? Who is he the opposite of? And if a light bulb just went off, you can hold it up. And you got a light bulb up? No, who's he the opposite of? Did you know that before? Can you see how he's like the opposite of Eve? And everything he's going to do is going to turn it around and make it backwards, what happened with the sin. So, for example, when Eve ministered the fall, it involved a, what's this thing? Did Jesus ever come into something that was a little bit tree-like? And what was it? Yes? The cross. So... Right? Wasn't the cross like a tree? But, but the opposite. This tree is made out of what kind of wood? What's the opposite of living wood? It is the cross made out of dead wood? Yes. So it's the opposite. So Jesus is the opposite. The cross is the opposite. Now, a little bit different. What's on the tree? Okay. What gets nailed to the cross? Yeah. So we got... Um, on the cross is the body of, yeah, okay. Now, unfortunately, this is where it all falls apart, right? Because in order for the fall to happen, Eve had to take, give, and eat the fruit of the tree. But on the cross isn't fruit. On the cross is the body of Christ. And there's no way we take, give, and eat the body of Christ is there. Is there any way we take, give, and eat the body of Christ? How? Where do we do that? What? At Mass, true. And when did Jesus give us the Mass? At the what? Last Supper. On the night before he died, Jesus said to his disciples, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body. So in other words, on his way to the cross, Jesus gave us all away. How many apostles were there? Wow. On the way to the cross, Jesus gave us all away to take, give, and eat the body of Christ, didn't he? Can you see how it's the exact opposite of everything here? Right? You can? Did you ever see that before? And there's even one more way. Remember how we said after the fall, um, alienation, you know, things not being cool in my own heart, 
Adam throws Eve under the bus. Things aren't cool with God. Even nature's going after them. Remember how we said that? And the word was alienation. What's a word that means the opposite of alienation? You use it all the time. When you were eight years old, and the first time you got to come up online and receive, you called it your first holy... That's what the word communion is. It's the opposite of alienation. Can you see all the ways that um, what Jesus did reversed what happened in the story of the fall? You know what you see here? A very intelligent pattern. Is it just at all accidental that all these things exactly reverse themselves, or does it look like it's an exact match? What does it look like? It's an exact match, right? Now let me tell you this. This story is written in what part of the Bible? The story of Adam and Eve is in what part of the Bible? The beginning, what do we call that first part of the Bible? The, exactly right. This story about Jesus is in what part of the Bible? Yeah. How many years are there between the Old Testament and the New Testament? From the very beginning to this time. How many years would you guess between this was written down and this was this happened? How many years would you say? There are things in the creation stories that show us that they were spoken long before they were ever written down. How long, nobody can say. We know their final form that we have now in the Old Testament was around for seven or eight centuries before Jesus. That means that whoever wrote, was inspired to write this story by God, God either gave them knowledge of the future or God in the future told them what to write in the past. Either way. Do human beings know the future? Do you know what's going to happen a thousand years from now? Or can you do something right now that's going to change the past a thousand years ago? But when you look at this pattern, you see something intelligent that either knew the future or knew, knows how to change the past. And humans can't do that. Who's the only intelligence that can do that? What? What? God. Whenever I see patterns like this, I see proof that, 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 that God's behind the Bible. Because there's no way for a human being to have invented that. Do you, do you see what I mean by that? This miraculous pattern, which began with the story of Adam and Eve, very likely a spoken story before it was written down in Old Testament times, and finding its completion in the New Testament Gospels about the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus, not only is a wonderful proof of the existence of God, but also, as depicted in the mosaic and the fresco of the cross as the tree of life, explains why such a beautiful work of art is a perfect adornment for an altar where the Eucharist is celebrated.